In this video, I'm going to show you how you can leverage AI to rewrite somebody else's content. And then I will end this video with what I believe to be a safer, better method, but albeit one that takes slightly more time. The main issues when you are rewriting somebody's content are plagiarism and copyright infringement, and also misinterpretation. And even if the AI that you are using does the rewriting really, really well, you're still responsible for ensuring you're not copying someone's intellectual property or misleading other people about the work's origins. However, that being said, there are lots of AI tools that do this, so I'm going to demonstrate one, and then I'll tell you what I believe to be a slightly better method if you've got a little bit more time. So I did a search for the keyword manikineko meaning. Manikineko is a beckoning cat that appears a lot in Asian culture, particularly Japan. Um, there are different styles and colors, but you've probably seen these around. You can see it gets 5,400 monthly searches. And after these AI results, we've got Wikipedia and then we've got some other stuff here. So I found this article, which is really, really cool. It's well written. It's on a really nice looking blog. And as we scroll down, we can see there's a lot of good quality content. So I'll copy the URL of this post, head on over to Koala Writer, and then make sure we've got Koala Writer checked here. And I'm going to come down and set this up. So we leave the first few bits alone. You may not have a project set up. That's totally fine. I prefer to use this model. We're then going to come down and under the article type, we are going to choose rewrite blog post. We're then going to paste the URL in here. You can see it's quite a long one. We get rid of that. Actually, we don't need that. Um, it's just going to check the URL, see if it can be rewritten, and it's going to tell us the tag. So we've got 9H2s and 7H3. So that's really cool. Then what I'm going to come down here and do is click on AI powered. I'm not going to worry about images or internal linking yet. For tone of voice, I'll just choose friendly. I'm going to leave the language settings as I like them, but you can change those. Of course, I prefer second person. I'm then going to turn on improved readability, use outline editor, and then use real time data, but uncheck this. And then what we'll do is we'll click on create outline and it's going to use that source article as a base, but completely rewrite it. But before it does, it needs to give us an outline of the article based on the original article. And we can decide whether we like this or not. There may be certain sections that just won't make sense for the kind of content that you are looking to create. So let's just wait for a few seconds. So here we go. We've got the introduction, we've got the content. So what I'm going to do is actually get rid of that and then just come through and everything looks like it makes sense. But this comes from that particular site. So what I might do is remove that entire section completely and also remove the conclusion that I'd like to write myself. So we just don't want to do everything without thinking that AI tells us. So this looks like a decent structure for an article. So I'll click on write article and then it's going to give us the first draft. But this is not what we are going to keep. This is just the starting point. So I'll pause the video while this does its first rewrite. We can see that it's done. It looks really nice, but we're not done yet. I'm going to click on Polish. These are all checked by default. If they're not for you, make sure they're checked. And then we're going to click on Start Polish. This is just going to rewrite the article, make it a little bit more succinct. It's going to break up some of the paragraphs, remove any repetition change some of the pa passive voice to the active voice, not all. And we are going to get a second version of this content. But this is not all. This is just the next stage. So we just kind of come down and you can see it's doing its thing. So again, we'll just wait for a few seconds. OK, so now it's been polished. I'm going to click on copy. I'm going to click on HTML and I'm going to come over here to Hemingway editor just to double check the readability and make sure that it's not too complex. So we're going to paste the whole thing in here and we can see that this is grade seven, which is, to be honest, it's perfectly fine. But what I like to do is find the sentences that are highlighted in red, which have quite a high readability level and just make them easier to read. So if I click anywhere on this red, um, we're going to click on this once, we're going to click simplify it for me, and it's going to give us an easier version. So rather than be grade 14 readability, it's grade four. Use suggestion. You don't have to use these suggestions, but I find that it just makes things easier to read. Now this here, where you've got a lot of words one after the other, that's because it didn't copy the table properly, but we can worry about that later. Similarly with down here, but if we come up the top, that's also a table, I believe. Table, so we're pretty good. I'm going to, yep, 
That all looks fine to me. However, I don't like these EM dashes that AI adds. So what I might do is delete that, put a period, and then just make a new sentence. So you can kind of go through and change things if you want. Now, what's also important is we check it for plagiarism. So what we'll do is we'll copy this whole thing because we don't want to be plagiarizing, plagiarizing at all. We're going to copy this. There are several things you can do. I can put this in Copyscape. You are going to have to pay a little bit of money. You can see I've got 20 bucks in there. I'll plonk that in there and I'll hit premium search. And also I could use Quillbot. I do have a premium account with Quillbot as well. They have a plagiarism checker. We can paste everything in there and then we can click on scan text. Copyscape is quicker. No results found for the text you pasted. So we don't have any plagiarism. So that's at a surface level where we're safe. But of course, we want to make sure still that we don't infringe on somebody else's rights or their intellectual property. So you've got to use this method with a little bit of caution. But what I tend to do once I'm at this stage and I'm kind of safe here and we've got good readability and we've got this is I still want to rewrite parts of it as my own. So I'll generally take this content and I will ask ChatGPT to do a couple of things. I'll ask it to give me a new title. I will ask it to give me an SEO title. I will ask it to give me a meta description based on what I want. And I will also ask it to rewrite the introduction based on one of six viral hooks. Now, if you'd like to know exactly the prompts and stuff that I'm using to do that, then I'll leave a link below and you can um, enter your email address and I'll give you, give you those immediately. So that's something more designed for click-through rate because it's no good writing a, an article that ranks if people don't click through to read it. So you want to make sure the title, the SEO title, the meta, etc. Uh, intriguing and get the click. And then you want to make sure that the first paragraph you want to make sure it's factual, of course, but you want to make sure that it's actually interesting and draws the reader in. And there are certain psychological hooks that we can employ. So I'll share a little bit more about that below. But once I am happy with my new title, my new introduction, my main content, I'll probably write a wrapping up section as well on my own. That allows me to add my own words to it. And we've got the bulk of the article minus a few sections based on another article, then we can go ahead and we can put that on our site. Now, it's nice and ethical that we also acknowledge the original source. So we can link to the original source um, in our content and give them some credit as well. I think that's something that's good. We can. A lot of people don't want to do that because they think, well, they're sending traffic to the competition. But if you're using this method, then that's something that I think you should do. Now, of course, what we can also do is we can go to the Koala Writer again. So I'm going to open this in a new tab and we can use a slightly different model as opposed to rewrite. Everything else is going to be the same, but we'll just keep it at blog post. We'll then go through, we'll add our target keyword, AI powered. As for the article length, if you don't do anything here, it can be quite long. I'm going to go with a short one, which is 950 to 1350 words, but you make the call on the length that you want. Tone of voice, I'm going to go with friendly again. The language will leave it as is in my case. We'll go with second person. Same kind of deal, real time editor, uncheck, check check and then we hit the create outline button and Koala AI will then go and create the outline for that article which we can run with or we can decide to play around with. So you can see here we've got slightly different you know topics that we're going to be talked to that are going to be talked about. So we've got for example the origins as an H2, then some H3 tags, symbolism and meaning, types, colours and cultural impact. And if we prefer this method, all we've got to do is hit write article and then everything else is the same, but we won't need to worry about Quillbot or Copyscope. So there are two ways to approach this. Obviously, it's entirely up to you, but Koala AI does include those options. If you'd like to check out Koala AI, I will leave a link below this video. If you have any questions, please let me know. Please consider giving this video a thumbs up and I'll see you in another video soon. Take care.